welcome to Paris Community Church. My name is Dee and I'm one of the volunteers here and I get the privilege of welcoming you this morning. And uh, today when I'm recording, there's a ton of rain, which is a little different than what we've had, but welcome nonetheless. Um, and so wherever you are joining us from, welcome. It's been super cool to see photos and hear from people who are joining us from all over Ontario. So if you're one of those people that's joining us from somewhere outside of Paris or just somewhere interesting, we'd love to see a photo of where you are watching us from. And you'll actually be entered into a contest to win a gift card. So there's some added motivation there. Nonetheless, wherever you're joining us from this morning, welcome to you. We're glad that you've chosen to be with us this morning and we hope that this is a meaningful uh, next hour or so together. There's a lot going on. Uh, last week at our in-person service, we were actually outside in the park. It was a beautiful day. We were uh, surrounded by nature, by kids playing, birds chirping. It was a wonderful day. We also had some visitors from Knox Church, so it was great to see some of you there as well. If you want to connect with us somehow, we would love to see you this summer. And one of the best ways that you can do that is actually to engage with our e-blast. So if you go to our website, you can sign up for uh, an email newsletter that comes out once a week, tells you all about all of the activities that are going on um, in the community. And we really believe it's important to connect. Speaking of connecting, if you really like marshmallows, bonfires, uh, and connecting with people that maybe you've never met before. Maybe you do know some of them. Maybe they're familiar faces as well. We'd love for you to join us for a campfire at the Sherbinos on July the 28th. So please intend to come. It would be great to see you. And it's just another way that we could all connect together. So this morning, we're continuing with our walk through Psalms. And we really hope that you are able to just relax and encounter God uh, through this message. So welcome to you, and we hope to see you sometime throughout the summer. Have a great day. Christ is my firm foundation.
as you're watching this, and as I'm sitting here talking to you, I know uh, that there are many of you out there who are struggling with feelings of, of guilt, with a, with a weight seemingly in your life. And, and I say I know that because I know that uh, I struggle with that in my own life. I know that many of us do. And we come to this table, we come before God with our guilt, and sometimes we just wonder what the answer is. We often talk about forgiveness, we talk about forgiving others and how important that is. And I think sometimes as Christians we forget that we ourselves are also forgiven. And I want to I want to dive into that a little bit today. And I hope you'll join with me as we uh, continue working through this summer series Timeless Tunes where we look at uh, psalms uh, that were written in the book of Psalms in our Bible. And today I want to look at Psalm 32. Because forgiveness, as I've described it so far, is, is a pretty simple concept, I think, to grasp. But there is so much power in it when we are able to grasp it. And so I want to dive into what the Bible says about our own sin about your forgiveness, you being forgiven for the things that you have done, me being forgiven for the things that I have done. So what has God done to deal with our sin? So I want to dive into Psalm 32, uh, the first seven verses here. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Now, the first thing that I notice about forgiveness, about dealing with our own guilt and sin, when I, when I read this psalm, is that God has prepared us for dealing with sin. He's given us words, he's given us language to, to describe it and to describe what it is. And there are a few words that are given here in this psalm in the first few verses. He says uh, transgressions is a word that he gives us, which means going away from or, or departing. It's like the act of rebelling against God. And then he gives us that word sins. In, in verse 1 he says, whose sins? Now that, that word sin is, is more meaning the, the shortcomings, the coming short of what God had intended, of, of defying his authority. When we fail according to God's law and, and are condemned by it, that is sin. And then he says in verse 5, uh, iniquity. Now, iniquity meaning the corrupt, the, the twisted, and, and the crooked. Twisting God's grace to fulfill our own desires. But the writer of this psalm doesn't stop at just giving us words to describe the, the weight, the, the sin, in our lives. He also gives us ways to describe what God does with the sin. He says we are forgiven, which means he has literally lifted our sins off. The, the burden is removed. He says our sins are, are covered over and that he does not count them against us. Now, you might say in, in, in reading this and hearing this language, perhaps it's language you've you've heard before, and you might say, well, I know that God has prepared me for dealing with sin, but 
knowing all of this, I still feel that guilt. I still feel maybe even in dead inside is, is how I've heard it described. And so I want to share some ways that we can rid ourselves of that, that guilt, that, that condemnation uh, that we often harbor. And I think the first thing that we see from this psalm is that we need to declare our disappointments. We need to share our heart with God. We need to confess the sin and guilt that we're, that we're feeling, that, that we're holding on to, that we, we feel like we can't get rid of. We need to bring that to God and confess it to him. Seeking out forgiveness for ourselves means first admitting that we are in need of God's forgiveness. Now, when I said earlier that forgiveness is, is simple, I don't mean that it's easy. Because admitting we are in need of God's forgiveness implies that we have in some way failed already. Now, I don't know what your sins are. But something I do know is that all of us are sinners. We have all failed in some way. And the thing that we need most is forgiveness. And so knowing that that applies to all of us, that all of us have failures in our lives, we need to confess that to God. Now, I specifically am saying confess it to God. And I mean Bring that sin to God first and not to other people. You know, perhaps you've done something or you've wronged another person. I think what I'm suggesting and what I see in this psalm is that we should bring that guilt, that sin to God first. Now, why would we go to God first and not, you know, straight to the person that we've wronged in order to ask for forgiveness? Well, I'm, I'm suggesting this because I think sometimes as humans, we have this temptation to try and manipulate um, our own feelings or, or the feelings of others in those conversations about forgiveness. And really the question I think I, I'm, I'm posing to us is are we trying to get from people what we can only get from God? Really the, the true forgiveness that I think we all need is something that we can't get from others. It's something that can only come from God. And I think far too often we, we hide from that. When we confess to God, we help to set ourselves free in what he has given us. Forgiveness is God's means of letting go of the past, moving forward with him. Because unless we do that, we're doomed to live in that past forever. So you might say, well, how do I let it go? How do I let go of the sin once I've asked God for forgiveness? Because sometimes we go and we ask him and we still feel that weight. I think the next thing that the psalmist illustrates for us is that we need to go and do what God directs us to do. Now, specifically, what I think he directs us to do when it comes to forgiveness and sin is to start by forgiving others and by doing it constantly. Do what God has asked you to do. Now, fortunately, we have a merciful and forgiving God. And I think if we've truly experienced God's forgiveness, then we will have a readiness to forgive others. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now, unforgiveness, not forgiving, holding on uh, to grudges and things of that nature, that unforgiveness is designed to destroy us. It can short circuit a family, a relationship, uh, even a church. The reality is that being hurt by others is inevitable. But with forgiveness, relationships can be mended and, and restored. Now remember also that very few of the hurts that we suffer at the hands of others are given to us intentionally. Occasionally people are going to hurt you, just like we sometimes hurt them. Both things happen even in the best of relationships. But I think the condition of our hearts is revealed in the way that we treat 
people who we feel have hurt us. And so having a forgiving spirit is not only something that God wants us to do individually, but he also wants us collectively as, as a church, as the body of Christ, to be characterized by a forgiving spirit. For years, I think the, the problem of, of unforgiveness has plagued churches, has plagued, plagued Christians around the world. People who won't speak to each other because of some disagreement, whether that's disagreeing on theology or personal issues or something else. People who look down their noses at others and say, well, they did this awful thing. I don't want to associate with them. We have to be the kind of people, the kind of, of church where anyone and everyone feels welcome, no matter who they are or what their past has been. God has given us a second chance, and he asks us to do the same for others. Regardless of who has wronged you, we owe it to Jesus to forgive. So we must confess our own sin and then do as God asks in forgiving others. And then I think lastly, what we really need to do when we're still feeling that weight is to recognize that we need continual forgiveness. It's not just a one-off thing. We need that forgiveness constantly from God and from each other. And fortunately, that's exactly what God provides to us. Everything leads to this issue of forgiveness. Now you might ask the question, you know, how do I know if I'm harboring unforgiveness? How do I know that that's the reason for, for the weight, for the guilt that I feel? I think there's a few things that we need to do in order to answer that. How do we know? I think we need to ask God to, to open our eyes to that unforgiveness. It, in prayer, in, in song, uh, in silent contemplation with him, and seek his genuine forgiveness in those moments. Ask for his grace to help us forgive others, and ask him to forgive us, to cleanse us of that pain and that sorrow. Now you, you might hear that and say, well, I've asked for forgiveness, but I still feel the guilt. I still feel the scars of my own past, of things that, that I've done that have hurt others or, or gone against God. I think we also need to, in recognizing that, desire and encounter with God. To tell God that we want to hear from Him. Go to a place where we can be alone with Him because only He can heal us. And then in that place, in that space of setting aside time and, and moments of, of silence with God, I think you'll find some things there that are, are really important for lifting that weight and burden of guilt. I think you'll find the Holy Spirit's guidance there. The Holy Spirit is someone who asks us tough questions about our, our attitudes, our, our wrong perspectives, and, and our motives. And in that time we set aside with God, the Spirit can reveal those things to us about our own lives, the, own, the things that we have been doing. I think in those moments we can also begin to realize who we truly are in God. The integrity that he's given us, the influence that we have over others. And of course, what it means to know Jesus. And lastly, I think in those moments we can receive direction from God. God's holiness always causes us to look within ourselves. And then his grace can begin to comfort us. Now sometimes when we have a long history of forgiveness, of, of unforgiveness in our lives, we might say things like, I regret this, or I regret that, or I've wasted my life even. I could have done so many things that I didn't do. What I'm asking I think of us today is that we don't drag the failures of our past into the opportunities of the future. The reality is that God wants you to be you. He doesn't want you to be somebody else. He still wants you to be you. And so in seeking forgiveness, we're trying to get right with God for the future, not to forget our past. First uh, John 
chapter 1, verse 9, tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. As we read in verse 1 of our, our psalm today, blessed is the person whose sins are forgiven. Now something I think that many of us need to be reminded of in all of this is that if God has forgiven you, then you need to forgive yourself. So many of us live in constant guilt and self-condemnation that we've been talking about. From time, in, from time to time, we, we all get hurt. But the person who won't forgive is the one who remains miserable. But on the other hand, if we can overlook it, then we can thrive and be happy. And that includes forgiving yourself, overlooking the mistakes you've made in the past once you realize that God has forgiven you. Now we've been emphasizing how God is merciful and God is gracious and he's willing to forgive our sins. I think we need to not lose sight of the fact that even though he forgives us, we often still suffer the consequences of those sins. The reality is that scars can remain even after we're forgiven. There are still things that carry on from those pasts. And so I also think that we need some assurance today that God will forgive us when we commit adultery, when we abuse alcohol or drugs, when we're dishonest, when we commit all kinds of sin. Scars might remain. We might still feel the effects of those things. But even when we're feeling that, the reality is that God still forgives us when we seek him earnestly. And so I think we need to take our sin seriously. Sometimes we can be more interested in ridding ourselves of the guilt that we feel than in ridding ourselves of the actual sin so that we can move forward. God is willing to forgive. He's, he's anxious to forgive us even. But we also don't want to take advantage of his kindness, of his grace. Instead, I think his patience with us should motivate us to get more serious in dealing with the sins that keep popping up in our lives over and over. The things that become habitual sin and rooting those out. And so I think we need to be as honest with ourselves as we, we possibly can. Ask yourself the questions, you know, how have I failed God? Don't rationalize it or, or shift the blame to someone else or sugarcoat it. You know, how have I failed God? Because if we confess, God is faithful to forgive. And so maybe that's where we need to start today. Back at the beginning, what we read today. In a spiritual sense, we need to turn ourselves in. Confess the sin before God. No matter how difficult it is to face the failures in our lives, we need to step out from those shadows of self-deception and acknowledge the sin that we do have. And so I hope that you'll, if you're feeling guilt, if you're feeling the weight of mistakes in your past, I hope that you'll pray uh, this prayer with me. Lord, I am a sinner. I have failed you in, in many ways in the past, and I know that I continue to fail you in some of the ways where I am most tempted. God, I come before you today to ask for your forgiveness, to cover over, to not count these things against me. And Lord, as I sit and feel the weight of the things in my past. I ask, Lord, that you'll help me to see the reminder of those things as a way to move forward without them. Help me to move forward with you. Help me to do as you ask of me, to 
to have a heart for forgiving others, for experiencing joy in relationships where there has been hurt in the past. Help me to do that, Lord, even as you forgive me and lift the weight off of my shoulders. This we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may you go in his peace today.
着。